我到现在哦，<咳>我到现在哦还不懂得怎么哦用 Zoom， 然后哦再开 Facebook Live， 再看 Monitor。你你你你你好像是看不到的，因为只有只有 Hold 才可以做那个东西、oh. 啊，你是没有办法看到的。对，等一下，我们看一下。你有 share 那个 Live 是吧？等一下，我已经忘了了，所以应该。Any time, 就会来的。啊，我们我们来好了。啊，我们来好了。Yeah, we are live. <笑> Hello, 大家晚上好。<笑>今天大家也在想哦，为什么那么晚呢？打台湾麻将。三缺一，<笑>因为我们的 Helen 要带小朋友回家，<笑>对吧 ？Yeah, g o o d evening. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Yeah, thank you for tuning in uh, to our our this uh, every Tuesday Facebook Live. But、uh, we have some changes in the timing, so we have changed it to we will start from 9 p.m. instead of、uh, 8 p.m. So、uh, it's a bit last minute. Then, then we actually announce. So sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. So anyway, uh, Helen, Helen is coming in any time. Yep. So basically, for us, we 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 will have a we will have a new topic to share today. Okay. Yep. Hmm. Today, 呢，咱们聊电屋呢，会跟大家分享呢。其实哈，尽管买电屋是。永久地契也好，又或者是九十九年或一百九十九年的地契，都值得考虑。为何呢？等一下就让大家看一下几个报刊就理解了。嗯,嗯 ，OK， so 啊、uh, ，for for today， basically basically we we have uh all all the we we actually started our Facebook live. Actually, I just I just look go through our records ah、uh, just to share. We started our our first Facebook live on eighteen of August, sorry, eleven of August. So we actually started with what will happen to commercial shop houses in the coming month after the pandemic. So we started our first, you know, Facebook live talking about after pandemic ah、uh, phase two ah,、uh, August eleven. Yeah. So we continue to 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 talk every Tuesday. We mention about you know what are the approval use you know for commercial shop house. And we are talking about what to look out for when applying a change of use. So really, really, I I also didn't did not expect that myself, Helen, and Gracelyn have did so many shop house Facebook live, you know, over the last three months. To be honest, ah,、uh. okay. Then continue. We we continue to to also share about, you know, red, white, yellow, green. What are the different zoning? We talk about zoning of master plan. So this is also another another very important topic that I feel that it is important to share with everyone here in the in the in the live lah. So additional buyer stamp duty does it apply for commercial shop house, and when, why, and how? Yeah. So generally, these are the these are the topics that we share, and we continue we continue to show to share also why buy shop house. Yeah. We also share about why buy shop house. Hey, Helen. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hello. Hello, hello. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, yeah, Taiwan, we can start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah while, while waiting for Helen. So anyway, I continue. So we also talk about live transaction for 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 shop houses in district in the prime CBD. We also talk about district seven, eight, and you know even in Geylang area. Then we continue to 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 share because fifteen of September, you know we have a we have a so called a a, a shop house report. So we actually present on the short report, you know, why the volume and the value of the shop houses has actually come down. Yeah. So this is also part of the part of the topic that we have shared. But doesn't matter whoever you have not you if you have missed our Facebook lines. Typically, you can actually go into our commercial our Protnex commercial industrial team, you know, Facebook page to actually go through it. Ah.、Uh. So I continue. We also cover what. We also cover primary conservation and secondary settlement. Just imagine, ah,、uh, we have covered so many things, ah,、uh, you know, into shop house. What are the different, you know, between both, and which one is favorite among the high net worth individual? 
Okay, another very awesome uh, topics that, that we have shared. We continue to talk about eating is a national hobby, which Gracelyn has covered, you know, quite a quite a big quite a big guide uh, of commercial lease and procedure and the usual term and condition, you know, how people how people do the, the how people plan for the F and B also. Uh. So this this is a topic that we have covered. And we have part two. We continue from from you know because because one hour is quite short. So we actually have have two portions uh, into this topic, uh, which Gracie has shared. Then we continue to talk about, you know, what to look out for when you're investing in the short house. Okay, so this is, this, this topic actually we have two portions. Basically, it's the checklist on, you know, what are the things that for you guys to take note, to look out for, so that you will not go into certain, certain pitfall. You know, we cover, we even, we're talking about, you know, licensing, whichever area cannot do change of view to f &B. We have also covered that also. So that is, we have covered two Facebook Live, generally the last two weeks that we have done. But today, today we are going into, you know, a new topic. Maybe, maybe Helen, you want to say something to the, to the, our audience? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, good evening. Um, yeah, so thank you, um, Richard, for the good, very good summary of uh, how far we've come and all the um, more than 10 topics, right, we have covered in uh, the last three months. So, yes, yeah, so um, we thought that uh, after going through all the various topics and, uh, and also we have a very um, detailed session from uh, Richard on um, the primary and secondary settlement and also the URA space, we've also gone through a lot on uh, approved use and also Gracelyn has covered um, the uh, procedure that you, you know for tenancy and for especially for F&B. And uh, after going through all these topics, I think it's time, uh, it's the right time now for us to put all this together into a conducive, uh, uh, like a summary of sorts. Uh, then, so today what we want to do is whatever we have learned so far in the last uh, three months, we are going to put them together and apply it uh, into a specific uh, shop house uh, that we are marketing. So now, um, we can put uh, things into practice, into real uh, situation when we come to a particular listing um, for sale, a short house for sale. What do we look out for? What do we look at? How do we check? Uh, what are the things, you know, is, um, um, is it, what, what's the plot ratio? What's the approved use? Uh, what is, is it freehold? You know, how do we, how do we make a URA space 2.0, our good friend? How do we um, get the necessary information. Uh, road buffer, yeah, there's another thing, right? Road buffer and approved use. And these are the things that uh, um, we can, tonight, we can actually apply it to a specific address, a specific shop house. And we can um, take a look at it. And these are shop houses. Uh, the shop houses that we're going to cover tonight by Richard Grayson and myself, these are the shop houses that are actually for sale now. They're in the market. And... Uh, after looking at it and examining and uh, going through, study the, the various um, uh, visibility of this uh, um, short house, and then we can decide or not, uh, whether or not this is a good investment. Yeah. So I think the first, um, the first one to do this is um, Gracelyn or Richard? <laughs> uh, maybe maybe we can start from Gracelyn, but b before before Gracelyn share his uh his slide, let me let me go into the the, the main topic first. Uh. just give me a second. Okay, so same thing. You know we have uh, changed a bit. Uh. we have changed our our beautiful you know our beautiful background. Uh, the timing from nine to ten p.m. Okay, let's talk about commercial shop houses. So same thing. You know, we will, we will always have this disclaimer. Basically, this disclaimer is about, is about what we have shared is truly our own opinion. You know, not so much of anything that, that, you know, anything that you are not sure can actually give us a call to find out more, you know, on whichever, uh, you know, doubt that you have. Okay, so these are the disclaimer. So, of course, today, generally, we want to focus, you know, what Helen has just highlighted you know, the potential opportunity and we will put everything all together, you know, into today's session to share with you guys how, what are the things to look out for and these are all live, live listing that is for sale on the market, okay? 
So if like that, then maybe uh, I will let uh, Gracie start the session first. Gracie, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh,那么今天我们有点卖狗肉了哈。那么，before我卖狗肉之前呢，我先跟大家分享一下，有时间哈，其实啊，以及哈，你们看电视哈，投去啊，go online so 那, those type of investment product 我是一知半解的 我真的是完全不懂, 所以跟他们聊天的时候, so in order for us to be better and to serve our customer, customer right, we actually enhance our own knowledge first so that we understand what the buyers are, what the investors are buying, buying in and why. When, when they want to sell, when they want to buy in, when they hold. Then from Robert Kiyosaki. Okay? 值得去投资你的时间读一下 早在2013年呢 他不是永久地契的哦。早在那时候，那个啊，主屋局的HDB Shop House 的地契呢，只是剩余大概七十多年而已。哈，它的成交价是两千三百八十万哦，不是小数目。那么下来呢，在二零幺五年的时候，在五G八都又有一间咖啡店突破了幺三年的那个成交价，是以三千一百万成交
地点我就不说。好，不然你不就没有人打电话给我了。<笑>那么最主要呢，今天还有一个电务，我也想跟大家分享在售的哈，是在沈市道。其实大家都很知，都众所周知，沈市道哈，整条街哈都有被路线啊，就是歌曲的电务。那么很多电务呢的都被路线影响，可是有那么一段哦，那么一段的小段的电务。他受我们是，这个这个是这种呃，这是呃 U R A 啊，重建发展局以化为保留，而且它是永久地契。现在我有一个单位在受，低于股价哦。那么它本身呢，它的屋身，它的地占地面积大概有一百一十六个平方，总建筑面积约一百八十六个平方，容积率三。那么最近呢，在这一年里面，有四个单位成交价是两百八十万。现在我手头上所卖的呢是低于两百八十万。如果感兴趣，打电话给我哦。我的电话是八幺二九零零零九。嗯，讲得太快吗？啊，还是 OK？ 需要重复吗？有没有问题？<笑>因为我我不懂怎么看 Facebook Live 的，我只会看 Zoom。<笑>有没有 questions 啊？啊、uh, ，OK。OK， 哈。啊 ，OK。嗯。那，都啊，都有有，都还有还有一些东西，你要跟我们的我们的这些 audience share 吗？呃，暂时是没有。嗯。OK。所以就是手头上大概有五套。可办餐饮跟咖啡店的，其实哈、哦，还有一件事就是跟想跟大家分享的哈、哦，就是说，呃，我我协助一位顾客哈、哦，就是更换他的那个店屋的用途，从 KTV 转换成餐饮。那么在这个期间，我发现到哈、哦，大概啊、呃，就是那个那个是就是换啊、呃，就是换成那个餐饮业哈、啊。这个期间的期限，那个、那个、那个更换的用途的那个时间哈、哦，已经是啊、呃、比平常还来的啊、呃、久，所以大家要啊、呃、就是忍耐一下，因为我们现在还是在冠病阻断措施的期间哈。那么其实呢，市场还是非常非常非常的活跃，而且。主要就是只要能办餐饮的店屋呢，其实已经我已经哈、哦、争取到帮业主争取到一些租户哈、哦、已经签下的租赁，那个租赁呢是由明年开始的都有，哈、哦，所以呢，其实如果投资店屋，只要是能办餐饮的，真的值得值得值得考虑，嗯，因为我们叫 Evergreen Tree 是吧？ Right, right. <笑>嗯。<laughs> yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Gracelyn, for your for your so called the the coffee shop the coffee shop uh session, which, <laughs> which is which is this is true. Ah,、uh, eighty percent of the of the Singaporean are staying in the HDB estate. You know, in the in the in the in the na neighboring estate. So that's why coffee shop is one of the one of the necessity. You know, for consumer to actually visit. And buy and have their their breakfast, their lunch, and their dinner. You know, in the location. So crowd is actually one of the main criteria for commercial property, especially F and B. Ah,、uh. so this is what I what I want to share. But okay, so if okay, then maybe I I will get ah、uh, Helen to come in. Helen, you are okay? Yes, I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, thank you, Gracelyn, for. For the presentation on a、uh, coffee shop, and、uh, let me just share screen. Okay, so the the property that we are marketing today, I think, uh, rightly so, right? Uh, Gracelyn and Richard has both uh talk about this. I think I think it is an open secret. Ah,、uh, the whole of Singapore knows about it. When it comes to F and B, ah,、uh, food and beverages, um,、uh, it just have. Hold a special uh space among all the retail shops. Hold a special place among all the shopping malls, and uh um, in in the Singaporeans' heart,、uh, when it comes to food, you know they can they can queue up for two hours. You know they can um travel uh far away. They can um 
wait in line for a parking lot just for that bowl or that plate of, um, of yummy food, uh, uh, whether Michelin star or not, so long as in their head and in their, in their mind, it is worth queuing for, they will go for it. So um, the property that I'm going to show you today is actually a food heaven uh, in Bukit Timah. Okay, why do I say it's a food, food heaven? You can imagine uh, if this is a place where you can see uh, Teochew porridge, you can see chunky white bee hoon, you have the Thai food, you have Muslim food. The Muslim food store you see is actually stretched over three short houses. You have the famous bakute, you have the creamy kopitiam, uh, even have two chicken rice shop. Okay, one is a five star uh, kampong chicken rice, the other one uh, is bun kiong ki. I think Singaporeans uh, uh, know about this place. I think Singaporean knows also bun kiong ki and five star and uh, this uh, kun bakute. These are all um, famous um, eateries. Uh, there's been featured in a lot of bloggers in, in their blogs. They've been featured in newspaper cuttings, in interviews, in the top 10 food to go for, top 10 places to visit. And, um, you know, these are uh, a very special thing uh, that when tourists from overseas, when they come to Singapore and they ask any Singaporean, Hey, uh, you know, show me a few places uh, that I should go um, for, for the top 10 food in Singapore. You see, they are all covered uh, in this small stretch of road, right? Because uh, the, the coffee and the tea that we get from Clinic Gobitiam, you know, it's from the sock, you know, it's not the, it's not the Starbucks kind of coffee. This is a different type of coffee bean. And then the um, bak the, the bakute that we get here is also something that we don't get, um, not readily, readily available elsewhere. Even the one in KL uh, and JB, they have a different type. It's a darker in color. It's, it's, not, it's just not the peppery type uh, and pure um, pork ribs. And then uh, also the first thing, the, one of the first few things that you think of is the chicken rice. And they are all here. So they just have to come here and go to one store every day. They can try all the top foods in Singapore. So isn't this a hidden gem uh, in Big Timah? Another reason uh, why I say this is a hidden gem. Okay, so this is another um, one of the topics that we covered. We have covered uh, in our previous uh, Facebook Live session. This is extracted from the URA space. So you can see what is the color that dominates this chart? Okay, that, leave aside the green part now. Okay, the green part is actually just open space and park uh, that uh, the government would like to preserve um, for the greenery, for, for um, cleaner air and, uh, and open space uh, for the people living in Singapore. But other than that, the, the predominant uh, color that you see here, they are, what kind of color? They are actually the peach. And peach color, you know that all this peach color is actually residential. These are all residential land. So in this like almost like 15 to 20 kilometer radius here, you see the predominantly peach in color. They are all residential. They are mainly residential. And then uh, these magenta ones, these are actually industrial. Industrial would be our warehouse, the factories, the B1, B2. Um, industrial estate. And then you also have um, maybe some yellow patches. These yellow patches are all uh, reserved. Okay. So predominantly residential. So just imagine if you are in a residential estate, what are the things, uh, the supporting um, industry uh, that is going to support all this industrial estate? You must have schools, Right, you must have clinics, you must have uh, shopping malls, supermarket, grocery, convenience store, and um, you also need um, F and B, food and beverage, you know, or bars, restaurants, um, places where you can go and chill out, uh, cafes, and those cafes and all that. Uh, they are mainly dark blue in color. Can you see in this whole picture? Can you point out where the dark blue colors are? There are only very tiny patches 
in maybe here, right? They are just very tiny dark blue patches. Uh. And the one that, uh, the short house that I'm talking about is actually down here. This stretch of short house. Um, okay, they are different, right? Because they are all dark blue, but when it comes to short houses, uh, dark blue short houses, they are only limited ones, limited. They are less than 6,000, uh, less than 7,000 in the whole of Singapore. And there are only about 20 units uh, in this stretch of Bukit Timah. So this stretch uh, of f &B, the famous f &B, actually serve uh, almost a 10, 15 uh, kilometer radius uh, of residential land. Okay, residential land. So this is somewhere uh, that people will go for when they think of good food, they think of supper, um, they think of a uh, special something, uh, um, something that is has has more flavor and characteristic. This is the only place that you'll go for. Okay, this white white Mickey Mouse glove over here. Okay, so I give you a uh, more uh, drawn uh, um, uh, fifteen kilometers radius. Okay, so these these are some of the uh, landed housing over here. There are condos and uh, HDB flats over here. And then this um, purple, their business uh, business industrial park, okay, B1, the B1 factories, and the magenta, they are B2. Okay, so, uh, and these are, over here, these are land that's under planning. So you can see in this whole place, and Bukit Dima Reserve, in, in this, uh, Bukit Dima Reserve is, some, is uh, a place where people want to go there and they, they feel that uh, it's a higher level of living, okay, higher standard of living because with the nature reserve, it actually gives you a better sense of well-being. So a lot of landed houses, a lot of people with higher spending power and a lot of people with um, better, more, more affluent and uh, high, uh, families, uh, they are usually found along Bukit Timah. So this is actually the junction uh, with uh, the, um, how to say the, the where the, the upper Bukit Timah meets Bukit Timah, which is at this junction here. This is actually a very busy junction. It's a very popular place um, for people to come. You know, if you heard of Beauty World, um, the, the shopping area, those are the places where people will go there to buy uh, their daily necessities, their food, their um, even like textile, clothing. They have, there's also a hawker center in Beauty World. Beauty World has um, already uh, been um, on block. They are going to build a new integrated um, condo in that uh, in, in the plot of land. So if you look at this picture again, within the 15 kilometers radius, there are very, very few F and B or commercial offering. So what does that mean? When you are like the, the thorn among the roses, you are the only dark blue among all the peach in color, it just means uh, that there's extra uh, value, um, extra, uh, um, how to say, uh, in, uh, extra value attached to this property uh, because you have a monopoly within this whole estate. So to go on to the next slide, okay, a clearer picture, um, these, all these peach ones, these are all landed housing, and then uh, the, the row of short house are uh, actually here. They are maybe about, um, about maybe 20 units of f &B, and then the rest are like clinics and some um, other retail shop that take away and stuff. And then the rest, if you see here, these are mainly uh, just residential. The light blue one, subject to uh, detailed planning and you know this um, plot ratio 3.0, these are actually residential with um, commercial only on the ground floor, on, on the first level. And uh, so this whole place, you have, oh, just imagine you have only like 20 over units uh, of f and to serve this whole place. This is actually a very, very popular um, eatery spot uh, for people living around here. So it is, this short house you're talking about is full commercial status. It is in the secondary uh, settlement, but uh, and it's freehold. And you know the good news is it's not even it's not even conserved. So it means that you can actually build it up, maximize the GFA. You can actually tear down the whole thing and build it to a very modern um, 
structure to support whatever um, whatever intention that you have for this particular unit. And then Beauty World MRT station uh, is just right next to this uh, stretch of short houses. Okay, Beauty World MRT station. So Beauty World MRT, that's the downtown line, is the dark blue line that goes straight to our new CBD, our uh, Marina Bay, new CBD to Marina One and um, um, Marina Bay Financial Center. So this is um, what we have here is in a very good location. It's in a junction, a very busy junction where a, a lot of cars will have to pass by. Those people who are living in the west and in the northwest, uh, when they want to go to town, they have to come by here. They have to come by here. If I can go back a few uh, slides, uh, they'll come by here because of this Bukit Dima Nature Reserve, right? Those traffic from all here, they will have to come down this way to go to town. So this is a very important junction, very popular junction, and this is where um, a lot of uh, traffic will pass by. And they actually also mean, uh, because this row of short houses is facing the main road, they also mean that you get a lot of exposure when it comes to um, free advertisement uh, for the traffic passing by. Okay, so this is another map. If you look at all this map, uh, from Hillview Rise, Phoenix Road, Dairy Farm, Main Fair, key residents and all this, right? Within uh, this radius, uh, there are actually more than 20, I think I counted it's 24 new launches in this area. 20, 24 new launches. Some just launched, some about to be launched, some haven't launched yet. Okay, so the next slide is a close up of this area. Chongqingna Road, the Road of Short House, is right at this area. It's opposite the link. The link will be building, building on Beauty Wall, the site where Beauty Wall is uh, standing right now. So Chongqingna Road is just facing the main road opposite the link. And uh, in this whole area, so you can imagine the kind of um, residential, the density yeah, is, if just now, whatever that show you all the peach color residential uh, plot, um, in the master planner, if that is not enough, okay, with all these new launches coming up, with Mayfair Gardens, with Good, Good Luck Garden, the link, uh, Forret, Good Luck Garden is now the Forret, then with Midwood and, and all these dairy farm, all these um, new residential that comes up, these are going to increase and bring new um, potential clientele uh, to this row of short houses. Uh. So you, you can just... Um, Picture, you can just imagine uh, the uh, right now the crowd is already very good. So those, those people who live in Bukit Timah area, you ask them Chongqing Nam Road, they say, oh yes, yes, it's a food street, it's a food heaven. And if that is the current situation, but with this all these new launches, uh, these are already in uh, in the process of building, like Twin View, Research Grant, these are already in the process of building. And all this will be completed uh, between from now to maybe 2024. So the next four to five years, there will be more um, uh, residents uh, being brought to this part of town, okay? And also, if you remember, uh, if you are in the news and you are in, been following up on what UIA is doing, uh, there is this railway corridor, and the railway corridor is somewhere here, Bukitima, Hillview area, this railway corridor. That's where the plot of land, where the railway previously run, they are now, um, now with the exchange right with um, the Malaysian government, Singapore government has got it back and now they are actually in the process of rejuvenating this area and they are going to convert this area into a recreational uh, uh, area for people. So a lot of, a lot more people are more, there's this hype now, a lot more people are now uh, looking uh, into Bukit Timah again it's like, Bukit Timah is like the main fair of London, you know, it's where uh, the up, uh, upper echelon of people, they are all coming to Bukit Timah. And if you look, talk to Malaysians or Indonesian or people from China, they'll know that hey, Bukit Timah is actually a good, um, a nice area to live in, okay, because the location is, some, is, uh, is something that's more attractive um, to, the, to the more affluent class of people. So with this, um, this real way, rejuvenation coming up, with all this new development coming up, there will be um, new interest uh, in this area. Property prices 
for whether it's commercial or residential, property prices in this area will have more activities and hype. Right? When you know that there are more sales figures and more activities, it will generally push the prices higher and push it up. So this is a, a place uh, where there are a lot of growth potential. And so, um, so when we are going back to looking at the approved use for this area, uh, Chongqingnam Road is a place where they do not add new uh, F&B or eating uh, establishment. So this one uh, is already an existing approved um, F&B for this area. So that one, you have no problem. You just continue with the existing, uh, keep renewing the existing F&B license. Uh, you will more likely be uh, granted. Okay. Level two is right now, it says residential. However, no worries. Okay, number one, okay, you, you will say, hey, well, 1957, and some sounds like a very old shop house. But don't forget, uh, this is freehold. This is a freehold shop house, full commercial, and uh, non, it's non-conserved. So it means you can rebuild it to the way you want it, right? And then for level two, I've checked under URA, level two can be converted to a shop, can be converted to a pet shop, a vet clinic, office, childcare center, even hotels or backpackers hostel, you know, um, service apartment, commercial school, medical clinic, all these uh, are allowable. Okay, with a question mark means question mark means it's possible. Those with a cross means you cannot. Uh. So all these are actually possible to have it converted to, to this. So um, there is actually a huge potential. It need not stay as a residential. And um, and if you understand the potential, right, if you are able to change this either to a service apartment or backpackers or, host or hotel, um, you will know from our past discussion in the last three, three four months, right, you will know that those places uh, with uh, hotel approval uh, will actually increase the value uh, many times more. Okay, so this is something that you want to bank, right? Okay, other information, uh, land tenure, estate in fee simple, that's the same as freehold. And then road buffer, I've also checked, there's no road buffer um, uh, at this location. That uh, means if you were to rebuild, you do not have to uh, buffer for a road reserve. Um, this Chongqing Road actually is like already, already a setback uh, for the main road. There is actually a lane, uh, uh, existing lane uh, for uh, cars to come in, uh, you know, with parking. So uh, there's no, it's not affected by road reserve. Okay, so this is only a 20 over units uh, along this Chongqingan road. And I just plot this, so there are very few transactions. So I just plot this example uh, for you. Uh, this one, uh, the holding period uh, is only 31 months. 31 months holding period is about two and a half years. And per annum uh, is actually 39.5%. So it was transacted 2010 at uh, 4 million. And in, in less than three years time, uh, it actually went up by, by more, than, more than double. Uh, okay. The profit was 4 million 80,000 um, in, in total. And um, if you, uh, this, this um, short house, right? Uh, just imagine if you have not paid in cash, you have actually taken a loan. So it means that with a 20% loan, uh, the return is actually 510% in two and a half years. 510%. Yeah. I cannot think of any other instrument, any other stock in the market. I cannot think of any one uh, that can match this kind of return for a commercial shop house. Uh. So I would, um, not that I'm trying to mic go yo, uh, okay, like what Jasmine say, but um, if I have the ability and the money, if this is something uh, really uh, that we should look into uh, because commercial shop house um, in, an area where it's just full of residential and you're serving that area full of residential and there are more residential coming in, then um, I, I cannot stress anymore uh, the potential of the capital appreciation um, for this particular short house. Okay, so this short house, okay, just to recap, it's freehold, plot ratio is 1.4, there's not 
um, affected by the root reserve, non-conservation, land is approximately, approximately uh, 2,200 square feet land. Uh, the exact we will discuss later. Approved as a restaurant for level one, we know that when it's approved for a restaurant, uh, it's actually it has a, a premium uh, over other places uh, the, within the same area that is not approved uh, for f and Guide price is 10.5 million, okay, 10.5 million. And if you are interested or you know someone who's interested in this particular kind of uh, shop house um, and in this, this particular uh, gem uh, that we uh, found, this hidden gem in Bukit Timah, then please give me a call. This is my telephone number. Please give me a call and we can discuss further. Okay, so that's uh, the end of my session. I think uh, Richard also has some good deals, right, to introduce to our um, to uh, introduce our audience tonight. So, uh, Richard, you can take over from here. Thank you, thank you, Helen. Yeah, actually, actually, Helen, this uh, this uh, shop houses that is uh, for sale is very very rare, to be honest. Uh. over the so many years, uh, actually, to be to be honest, seldom the owner want to put it up for sale. So it's really a gem, and he has she has already highlighted, you know, so many so many advantage, you know, in terms of location and so on. Uh. so yeah, just give just give uh, Helen Helen a call to find out more. Okay, so that is something that I think it is really a gem. Uh. Okay, so let me let me share my my portion. Let me go to my slides. Okay, yep, can see uh, Helen. Yes, okay. yes, clear. So, yes. So typically today, today you know what 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 Helen and Gracelyn has shared, you know we want to put all the things that we have shared over the last twelve Facebook Live into into listing that is for sale. So that's that's you know we, we talk about theory and now we are coming into practical. So practical means what? Practical means we want to go straight into the listing and we want to see you know what are the things to take note. You know like Helen mentioned about root line reserve. You know. So these are the things that we want to we want to share. Okay, so typically this is a slide that we have shared, but I think I think for those who have, who, who just joined us, you know, I just I have I have shared these slides, you know, in in one of our Facebook live. I just mentioned a bit more. So why commercial shop house? You know, typically it is because of there's no new shop house supply. So typically the supply are fixed. That's the reason why. You know, shop houses prices are resilient. You know, in talking about positive, you know, in medium to long term, uh, okay. So of course, if it is a commercial shop house, local and foreigner need not pay ABST. So that is one of the 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 the, the you know the a very good uh, advantage of uh, of such a shop house. Uh, only full commercial shop house. Uh, okay. So. Foreigner are eligible to buy. They can actually buy, you know, into heritage value and own a piece of Singapore history. Okay, so that is something of, about shop house. It's, it's for those who just join us. You know, you are not so sure. So these are the information that we can we can share. So you know, these are the photos, you know, of shop house. Yeah, typically, just now what Helen has mentioned are those non-conserved. But now we are coming into the conserved shop house. Okay, so these are the areas. That are conserved typically in in the in the historic district. Okay, uh, this Haji Lane, this Tanjong Baga location. Okay, so we 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 jump straight to the to the to the unit that I I so called you know I'm I'm recommending you know I just want to share and go through again what we have learned you know over the last show Facebook Live and go into more in depth ah. Okay. Give me a second. Okay, so typically, first of all, we want to talk about first. Okay, anyway, this shop house is along Trust Street. Okay, first of all, you need to understand Trust Street are under Chinatown, Chan Tanjong Baga Conservation Area. Okay, inside already stated that it is conserved building in a historical district. Okay, first of all, you need to understand these are conserved. Okay, things that you need to think, no, these are conserved. Okay, then we talk about what we talk about. We talk about land size. Okay, land size typically, you know, you guys can actually buy ownership from Inlis. You will be able to find out the land size for this particular shop house. So, typically, the shop house is one three three nine square feet in terms of the land size. 
Okay, GFA will be will be we mentioned about gross floor area. So how you I how you know that this shop house is four thousand and fifty square feet? Okay, so this is also one of the checklist that we have actually highlighted. You know, in our last two Facebook live, ah, uh, okay. Typically, it's only the last two Facebook live recently only. So how you look at the GFA? You can either have a floor plan, a BCA floor plan. Second, you can actually has a, has a value has a so called a, a, a surveyor who come and do the measurement. So through the measurement, you will be able to check to know the exact size of a shop house. So this particular trust street shop house is 4,050 square feet. Okay. So this is a size. And thirdly, zone. Okay. And, and we have also covered zoning. So typically, you need to know about what type of zoning it is. And this trust street is fall under commercial zoning. So when it comes to commercial zoning, we are talking about foreigners are eligible to buy. There's no ABST, which I just shared just now. So these are the things that you guys need to take note. If this shop house is commercial residential, then foreigner will not be able to purchase. So guys, you need to take note. Okay, so you need to not understand what exactly the shop house is. Then tenure. Tenure, this is 99 is 99 year lease so from 1995. So it is still, you know, quite a quite a Quite a long list to go. Uh, it's about over 70 over years uh, to go. Uh, 70, correct. It's about 70 over years to go. Uh. So they have three story and attics and tenanted to FMB. Okay. So FMB on the ground floor, upper floor, they are they are offices. Okay. So this particular unit, I just want to share. This unit, this unit is tenanted to FMB. The total rental for this particular unit is $26,000 per month, inclusive. You know, of the ground floor F and B and upper floor office. Okay, they have total three, uh, total two office tenant who occupied the second and the third floor plus the attics lah. So it's a beautiful restore shop house. Okay, so this is one of the things that. And how about the price? When we come to price, you know, are we looking into the land size per square foot or are we looking into the GFA per square foot? Okay, so this is also things that we have actually covered, you know, during our, our last Facebook live. Typically, again, we have to understand this shop house is conserved. What is conserved shop house? Conserved shop house means you no longer able to rebuild and redevelop, example, to six story, no longer. So meaning that if you are no longer to rebuild and do redevelopment, you need to look at the GFA because the GFA is fixed. You're no longer able to increase the GFA. So GFA is an important so-called, you know, uh, uh, so-called uh, something, uh, a guide for you to look into it. So this particular shop house, the price, the, 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 the so-called the reserve price for this particular unit is 10 million and above. Okay. It's 10 million and above. Okay. 10 million over 4,050 square feet. Let me use my calculator just oh. give me a second. Put two, eh? Rental you 3%. 10 million divided by 4050. So the per square foot for this particular unit is less than $2,500 per square foot. Okay, so again, we what, what we want to go through is typically what we have learned over the last three months. Okay, so we just want to get a listing out and share so that everybody can learn, be it in the theory and now we are going into practical. So when you look at a shop house, so what are you looking at? So for this particular shop house, look into the GFA because it is conserved. Okay, understand? Huh? So per square foot for this particular, it is less than $2,500 per square foot. In the commercial shop houses in prime Tanjong Baga area. Uh, okay. And Christine just highlighted about the, 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 the rental U. Uh, okay. The rental U actually has crossed 3% gross U. Okay. So typically if you ask me, this is one of the, one of the shop house that you can actually, you know, look into it. Okay. So let me, let me proceed to the next thing. So again, you know, like what we have learned on the usage, and what exactly this particular unit are, 
okay that is important uh. okay we need to know the licensing for this particular unit on the ground floor is a restaurant okay so you have learned about how you look at you know restaurant second floor third floor and mezzanine their office typically i just shared they rented to two office tenants okay so restaurant then come come to date of approval okay i have also shared you know over the last facebook live that date of approval there is permanent f and b and also temporary and this particular unit there is no expiry date it means this restaurant is permanent f and b okay in short lah, okay so these are the things that you guys have learned so we just want to go through and show you guys what is it all about huh? so anyway some of the photos of the shop house okay so it's an fmb on the ground floor okay so this is one of the the fmb and the, the shop house is along trust street yeah so when we come into zoning okay we have also shared about primary conservation and secondary settlement. So how you look at primary conservation and secondary settlement? Typically, you guys need to look at the C, okay? C represent conservation, okay? So, so meaning that, you know, this unit is a conservation short house as I just highlighted, okay? Okay, so typically this is, this is how you look at a short house and also the recent transacted price for Trust Street, you know, you can actually look, take a look Actually, actually, trust me, recently there's no transaction. Okay. The last few transactions that has done, you know, 21.2 million, 9.9 .9 million, 7.2. But these are all talking about land size per square foot. Because in 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 you know, guys just that just have to highlight, you know, in be it SRX, be it uh H prod, be it uh square foot, you will not be able to find out the GFA per square foot. Okay. And what I want to, want to share is, you know, you need to know, of course, just now I already highlighted, because this is a conserved shop house, you should look at the GFA instead of the land size. Why is it so? It's because if a 2,000 square feet land on the ground, on, on a two-story conserved shop house, okay, transacted at 10 million, and a 2,000 square feet land size on a three-story shop house, transacted at 12 million, you know. So this is something that because of the GFA is bigger, that's why the value of the shop house are higher. Okay, then you should look at what? What you should look at? You should look at, is it a conserve or not? If it is a conserve, you should look at the GFA and see whether the guide GFA per square foot, is it reasonable or not? Okay, what I want to share is, in this transaction here that I show you, okay, there is transaction for, for Trust Street, example. This, the, this uh, particular Trust Street unit that has transacted, the per square foot already done, $2,500 per square foot in 2018. Uh, okay? And in, in this location that I have transacted one unit, you know, at nearer to the Pixia area, at $3,000 per square foot. So when this type of transaction has done $3,000 per square foot, so when you have a unit that is selling at 2,005 per square foot, it is considered, you know, is something that it is fair price to enter. This is what I want to share, okay? So this is how you look at a secondary or, no, sorry. This is how you look at a primary conservation shop house. Okay, understand? So typically this is what, what we guys want to understand. Huh? Okay, so let me see. Ellen, is there, do we have some time now? We have left five minutes now. Huh? Yeah, we have five minutes. Five minutes, huh? yeah. Oh, so time typically, flies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, typically, typically for us, okay, I, I just, we, maybe we can sum up, you know. Yeah, so typically we have, we have a lot of uh, case to actually share, you know, but of course we want it, we want it to be, you know, in a more systematic way, how you look at it, you know, example, the trust street unit that, that I, I just highlighted, Okay, that particular unit, I have already checked. There is no root line reserve. That is something that you need to take note. Okay, and we need to take, take a look at the licensing. Licensing already stated it is a permanent F&B license. Okay, then we're talking about, you know, it is conserved. So typically, these are all the checklists that you guys need to understand. Okay, so 
that is what I what I want to what I want to highlight for today's session. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Christine, maybe you, you want to share something. Yeah, I think uh, everybody must must be thinking, one you made a go your how good you 10 million. <laughs> well, okay, I have learned something uh, from the book which I think I would love to share with everyone, the statement. Uh. Okay, there was this statement uh, quoted by the author and he says, the average investor look primarily at the price as the opportunity to buy or sell. But the sophisticated investor has trained his or her brain to see opportunities other than price. And that is known to the sophisticated investor, huh? that the best investment opportunities are not visible to the untrained eye. Hen Chim Ho. Ting Tong Ma. You will talk about Chiu. I I tong the pen so shit that young don't see it. Football can only be played to a certain age for a footballer. But golfing can be for a lifetime, regardless of age. Okay? So that's why now I understand why businessmen love to play golf. But what the golf missing shit? <laughs> yeah. So I think I start to understand oh, as, I, as I go, you know, and I uh, immerse in with of my passion in the shop house, I get to know this owner. Then when I start to talk to them, I realize that they speak very differently. They speak very differently. When I saw that their objection, their, there's objections from them, right? Then I start to understand. From the objection, there was opportunity. You know? Today I learned some from I learned something from them too early in the morning at 9 a.m. 九点钟的时候在聊一间店在售的在谈价钱然后呢他就跟我说 indefinitely cannot be open So I saw the track I saw the business operator facing a circumstance and they need to pivot into other industry. And I empathize the tenant, but same time for the landlords, the owner, they are also facing the same. So how? Do you think the shop house segment will slump? Prices will go down? No. I saw a lot of opportunities. Yes. Yeah, so you know, look on him, yeah, told you, you cheese, huh? You must so can't doubt the sick, uh, way cheaters, huh? Takiwa, or punny tantan opportunity. Yeah, 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 very good, very good. Anyway, anyway, you know, for, for us today's session, you know, we actually applied on what we have learned over the last 12 session into practical. So I think, I think we will want to continue in this way, but we will go into different locations to let you guys understand, you know, to let everybody understand that, you know, where actually, and we actually highlighted on hotspot uh, also. Uh. So we want to go into more hotspot, like, you know, what Helen has just mentioned, the, the location. That is exactly, and that is very rare, and it's only 20 over units. Uh. So mm -hmm. I, I, I will urge that you guys, you know, can just call Helen and find out more so that you guys can actually, you know, see whether is there any of your customer. If you are, if you are, if you are a realtor, if you are watching us now, you can actually recommend to your customer. If you are, if you are interested, if you are a buyer, a potential buyer customer, if you want to find out more, you can actually call Helen. Yeah, maybe Gracelyn and myself also. So to be, to be honest, that is truly opportunity around shop houses that there is a lot of Singaporeans, you know, are not looking into it. That's why we want to actually share this, this asset class to, you know, as many person as possible so that you guys can actually benefit, you know, from our session and can actually get hold of some good unit. You know, that, that is for legacy. Buying shop houses, if you just imagine like, like Helen's, the, the, the unit, it's a freehold unit. It is really for legacy. Uh, your, your family members can continue to use this shop house to rent or be it. They want to do it for their own FMB. You know, that is something that I, I, I find it, it is awesome. Uh, okay, that is awesome. So Helen, you want to share something? 
No, it's, it's um, uh, very fast, right? One hour is over. So, um, <laughs> so thank you very much for uh, coming in and thank you very much for liking our page and share our page. And uh, we will back, be back again next Tuesday. This time will be 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock. <laughs> 10 o'clock on Tuesday. So uh, we'll see you guys again next week. 拜拜我们下周咱们聊天五周二九点钟哦 See you Okay, thank you Bye